All right, welcome to FNTV, the channel to watch if you are interested in stocks traded on NASDAQ First North. And today we have with us from company headquarters in Norway, Tobjörn Bull Jensen, who's the CEO of Arcane Crypto. Welcome, uh, Tobjörn. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, great to have you. So you just released your Q2 earnings report today. Are you happy with the results? Absolutely. This is the best quarter we've ever had in Arkane's history. We have had a revenue of more than 100 million Swedish kroner. Uh, we've done kind of great recruitings and had great operational progress. So super happy. Great. So for viewers who might not be familiar with your uh, company, do you just want to give us a, a brief uh, uh, intro to what you do? You're more like an investment company in the, in the crypto space than an operator right now. Is that a correct description? Yeah, sure. So we're taking an ecosystem approach. We're not just an exchange. We have exchange, we have market research, we have asset management, we have payments technology. So we have this portfolio spanning the value chain for financial services linked to digital assets. Right now, as you say, we are more of an investment company. We hold stakes and uh, in a lot of companies and we have fully owned subsidiaries. What we are working on going forward is to really bring a lot of these companies together to create more of a unified offering. Great, so uh, if we want to go into the report a little bit, are there any particular highlights that you want to bring up first? So obviously the revenue is the, you know, the main number that hits people straight in the face. Uh, this was uh, partially driven by the acquisition of uh, Kaupang, a Norwegian cryptocurrency broker, and the consolidation of their revenue into ours, but also driven by record numbers for both Arcane Assets and Arcane Research. In addition, during the quarter, we invested uh, in Allen Markets, a derivatives platform that is using the Lightning Network for instant deposit and withdrawals of collateral, where we increased our ownership from uh, 15 to 16 percent. Uh, and they've also seen great development. And lastly, I want to highlight Pure Digital, one of our portfolio companies where we hold a 37.5% stake, where Bank of New York Mellon, one of the largest investment banks in the world, announced their involvement with the project, along with uh, State Street that was announced previous quarter, and where there are now four other banks in addition, a total of six uh, tier one investment banks that are now a part of the consortium, kind of have signed LOIs with Pure. So that's a super interesting development to see how these players that would never touch Bitcoin a couple of years ago, now actually coming into it. And it's extra kind of fun for me, uh, representing Arcane as an owner in this project to see this development. All right, so if we take a look at uh, the numbers, uh, you mentioned you have record earnings during the quarter, revenues grow from two to 100 million. I mean, what, what is behind this, this kind of growth? Yeah, so as I mentioned, the main factor behind that is the acquisition of Kaupang Crypto and the consolidation of their revenue into our books. So that is kind of the main driver. Uh, and in addition, uh, Arcane Assets, our fund management arm and Arcane Research had a record quarter. Of course, uh, the 100 million number is also to some degree the result of how you account for revenue in a cryptocurrency brokerage. So the growth is not completely apples and apples if you compare quarter over quarter. But even if you adjust for that, there's strong underlying growth in our revenue. So, yeah. So, so what is that underlying growth then for those who are looking at the margins? Yeah, so now we're more than doubling uh, our growth. And if you only look at the gross margin from the revenue on Kaupang and add that to the other revenue sources, we are looking at a little north of 5 million uh, sec for the quarter. Okay. And you are a, a growth company. And if we look at the bottom line, then the company EBITDA was a loss of a million and a half uh, around there uh, compared to a loss of 11 million for Q1. So what is the reason then for, for that result improvement? Yeah, so this is very much as expected. Uh, and the main source of the difference is actually an accounting technicality, where the employees' incentives, uh, we kind of do an offset for expected future tax burden. And that is kind of fluctuating from quarter to quarter. And that's the main explanation for the difference. Of course, uh, record revenue also helps uh, pulling EBTA up. Uh, but overall, it was uh, as expected. Yeah, so just looking at the result then, it's, it's a vast improvement from a loss of 11 million to a loss of uh, 1.5 million, but it's still uh, a loss. Is that uh, according to plan that you're a growth company and, and, and that you're uh, investing in, in growth right now? And how long can you sustain doing losses? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a strong balance sheet. We had 33 million in our bank at the end of the quarter. And as a growth company, uh, the whole idea is to take the revenue and reinvest in future growth. So all according to plan. Yeah. And uh, is this something that you feel that the investors uh, are expecting for you to uh, to grab market share and be aggressive? Or uh, what kind of feedback have you been getting so far? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, to be an investor in a company in Arcane, you should be really long term. Uh, and it's about taking a position. This is a new paradigm shift. It's a new industry emerging. So really going for that growth uh, is what makes sense for the company. That's how we build long term shareholder value. And I truly believe that uh, those who are with us as shareholders uh, should expect that from us. Yeah. So going into the future then a little bit then, and, and what are your priorities now for for uh, the third quarter? Uh, you, you mentioned growth. Is that uh, high priority, I gather? Yeah, yeah, no, growth is always a high priority. But uh, what we did previous quarter was, uh, and actually straight after the quarter, was to to acquire Trio, the Swedish retail ex uh, cryptocurrency exchange. We have earlier acquired Kaupang. Now, going forward, it's really all about consolidating, taking these different business units, and we are going to bring them onto a uh, unified shared tech platform so that we can really unlock the synergies and really create the... Uh, uh, extra value from having all of these companies under the same roof. The main focus will initially be on the exchange services and the integration with Tesla Coil, our kind of payment technology service into that. But we're setting it up in such a way where also our asset management arm and research arm will be kind of consolidated into this one tech platform and one product platform. Okay. So uh, we should really talk a little bit about macroeconomic trends too, because uh, the crypto market and, and Bitcoin is something that we're seeing uh, headlines uh, about in, in the news uh, every day now. And uh, if we start with all the different stimulus packages that have been uh, uh, announced by the central bar banks all around the world during the pandemic, uh, there's been some criticism there too, also in that the central banks basically are are are, are printing money. And how do you think that affects, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin and investing in in decentralized systems like the cryptocurrency systems that that you invest in? No, so it's very clear that uh, accelerated printing of money from central banks is driving more and more investors into Bitcoin. They view Bitcoin as a hedge. Uh, the scarcity is absolute. There's no government that can print more Bitcoins. And uh, it's almost emerging as a rule of thumb for a well-diversified portfolio to have at least a couple percentage as allocated to Bitcoin, similar to how gold has kind of, you should have 5% of the portfolio in gold. And looking at the macro environment, uh, it seems highly unlikely that governments will be able to kind of scale back on this stimulus quickly. There's so much debt out there. There's so much leverage out there. Uh, so you really start to see uh, distrust in the established system emerging. And even though I hope that it doesn't fail, it really makes sense to have some allocations to some assets that would do really well in a scenario to kind of serve as an outside hedge and people view Bitcoin as that hedge. Okay. And uh, another thing that we've seen a lot about in, in, in the news is that uh, China has cracked down on, on cryptocurrencies. Uh, how has that affected Arcane? Well, actually, it's very interesting that you mentioned that because Arcane is now moving into mining. And what China really cracked down on was mining. Almost overnight, they banned every miner from operating in the country. And China was the largest country in terms of Bitcoin mining. This has resulted in miners, kind of the machines themselves, uh, flooding kind of west and being spread all over the world, uh, which means it's easier to get access to mining hardware. Uh, in Arcane, we uh, launched a business unit, Arcane Green Data, just after the quarter. We have secured hosting capacity for uh, two and a half megawatts, half of that starting now in September and the other half in uh, Q Q1 next year. And we're now in the process of acquiring miners. So for us, it's great news that the uh, Communist Party decided to crack down uh, more or less simultaneously with us <laughs> announcing our uh, move into mining. So, and actually it also turned out to be very positive. Uh, mining was very centralized. It's becoming more decentralized. There was a lot of fossil fuel used uh, as uh, energy for mining. That is now provably uh, increasingly green. And for our operation, we are going to do 100% green mining with uh, kind of pure hydropower. Mm. 
That's interesting. Uh, that's an interesting take on it, and I guess that's also in line with uh, what uh, what one of the world's richest men, Elon Musk, has uh, tweeted about. Also, that uh, you know he sees a problem uh, with the electricity used uh, in in uh, mining crypto. How how have you seen on how he's been able to move on the markets and and uh, his different points of view? What, what's your take on that? Well, I guess Elon is all over the place and switching from one day to another, you know, pumping Bitcoin, announcing that Tesla had bought for a billion dollars, and then the next day uh, saying that he didn't like Bitcoin because there was too much fossil fuel. What he did say was that uh, when Bitcoin uh, mining is provably above 50% renewable, Tesla will start accepting it as a payment instrument again. And now the newest estimates are actually sitting at 56%. If I'm to guess, I think Elon saw that there was a lot of negative uh, um, focus on Bitcoin. He knew that it is actually greener than what most people think. But he understood also that he had to play this game of being on the environmental friendly side. Now the data is coming in to give him the argument for why he can still be pro Bitcoin. But that's my guess. So kind of what the strategy was. But mm. at the same time, Elon is a guy who pumps whatever. Uh, super active on social media, a great meme person, but uh, yeah, he is what is. <laughs> yeah, and I guess at, at least he, he adds to the interest in the cryptocurrencies. Uh, I mean, you can tell that he's really engaged in this uh, space himself. So what do you think about the value of, uh, of Bitcoin currency uh, in general now in the third quarter? I, 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 I'm not asking you to make a, <laughs> a prediction <laughs> should, of, of, of where it yourself? will go, <laughs> but are you, are you worried about the volatility that we've seen during the last six months? How do you, how uh, do, how do you combat uh, that? I mean, I've been, I've been in Bitcoin since 2013. So I've had my ups and downs. I've seen 80% corrections in the past. Uh, and I'm actually very optimistic because uh, the market was really frothy uh, this spring when we reached uh, kind of a, a record market cap for Bitcoin of $1.2 trillion. At that time, there was a lot of kind of uh, TikTokers, influencers, retail was kind of running ahead of itself. But what is super interesting is to see that even though the Bitcoin price almost halved from that top, the interest remained as high as ever. Institutional players are slower. They are still here. Uh, the whole investment case as a hedge against central bank printing is stronger than ever. And this is actually reflected in the price having regained substantial territory. So in many ways, it was a necessary wipeout of a kind of euphoria and froth going a little bit too far. Um, but kind of unlike uh, the bear market of 2018, the momentum is still very much intact. We're still very much in a bull market and adoption is happening all across the board. So I'm, I'm very positive uh, towards the future, both for this industry and kind of Bitcoin in particular. Yeah, it's interesting to hear. I mean, there's so much happening that we could talk about this all day today. Uh, but that's all the time we have. So uh, thank you, uh, Torbjörn, for uh, joining us today from Norway. Thank you for having me.